decided we had to go virtual for that that number one FK no and hopefully in the summer we will be having a live convention just simply because we had yep. a hotel contract and we figured why and wait it? it? Uh, so the rest of the committee we have the Heymans wave jo Judith and Dave we have Peggy we have Ken who is of course doing his usual sound thing and we have um, somewhere on here we have Morva, I presume now, who's and I saw Alan coming on. Um, I guess they're doing a, a separate thing right now. So, hello. And we have Sally. Say hi, say wave, Sally. Oh yeah, there's me. Hi. She's the con chair. See the big chair she's in. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Anyway. Welcome, and right now it's basically our opening ceremonies, and there's lots of people here. We're already at 44 people. Um, there's not much more to say than welcome, and pass it over to, to Kathleen. Uh, I could go into some notices, we'll remind everybody that we do have some merchandise to support the convention if you wish to do so. Um, it's available on Redbubble. The links are uh, on all the usual places. Uh, I have just pages. reposted I've just reposted the link. And, and Peggy just reposted the link in the chat. So uh, this, you can always help us out a little bit because there are some general operating costs for the convention. We do as of when I last checked, which was I think 10 minutes ago. Um, let me just check again. Uh, we do. No, we don't. Oh, yes, we do. We still have a single um, 15 minute slot available on Saturday at 1215. So if anybody would like to sign up for 15 minute um, moments of fame, please go ahead and do so. Right, Kathleen, over to you. Kathleen, yep. I'm no longer my husband's picture. Yes. <laughs> I uh, I I signed. It says I muted again. I don't know how I did that. Um, I uh, the reason my picture's up there is because I'm walking around doing stuff. I'm actually desperately looking for one color bead that I know I own and I have no idea where I put it. Um for something I'm working on, but I was on a, a longer call and I used his his uh, pro account and so I keep forgetting to sign out and so when I sign on to Zoom with this account, his picture comes up and I kind of like looking at it because he's, he's, he's a good looking guy. So that's why I've left it up and that's why my thing says really Kathleen because I'm not him. Um, so to those of you who missed consonants and missed my um, my excuse for the weekend for not being able to sing well. I am now the proud owner of braces, which have totally changed how my mouth works and my lips get stuck on my teeth. So lots of things don't sometimes happen the same way I think they will. Um, and it was lovely at Consonants having people sing along with me and uh, play along. And I won't hear that this time. But I can see you, so I, I uh, hope that you play along and sing along with uh, the song that was born at Phil Ontario. Do you remember back when we were kids? We were artists and dancers and musicians all. We sang because we needed to, we danced because it gave us joy, made art to share our very selves with the world. And as we grew older, it became very clear that all of us were good enough to make the grade. Our singing was sometimes off key, our dancing had a few missteps, our art was judged a bit too odd to share with the world, but we can take it back, take it back. 
Take back the right to sing and play. It will fill your heart. It will feed your soul. When you take back the right to sing and play. In a dozen other countries, no matter your age, you're encouraged and expected to create. Here in the West, we've been robbed of that choice. Come join our revolution, we found our own solution. You're all invited to participate. When we take it back, take it back, take back the right to sing and play. It will fill your heart, it will feed your soul. When you take back the right to sing and play, we have broken the we have carved out this space where skill is not the only measure of our worth we're free to sing in circles here and dance if the spirit calls make art once again and share ourselves with the world we will take it back take it back take back the right to sing and play it will fill your heart it will feed your soul when you take back So welcome to our diverse little clan. Don't worry, you're not good enough. Come grow with us. We'll help you with your melody. We'll catch you if you trip and fall. We'll celebrate the art you choose to share with the world. We will take it back. Take it back. Take back the right to sing and play. It will fill your heart. It will feed your soul. will say I'm kind of glad I have I have my glasses on so I can see my words so my computer screen which is in um, gallery view is a little fuzzy but I could see people singing along and I could see that it's very good that you're all on mute because it kind of looked like what is that movie is it what's up tiger lily that where it was dubbed and it was dubbed badly because everyone's mouths are moving at different speeds it's <laughs> I can see some people are like, you know, three, four, five, six words behind. It's it's uh, kind of interesting. So Sally, am I just to launch in or are you guys going to say anything else to anybody else who may have joined us? I don't know. Just, just welcome. Welcome to everybody. Um, FKO, KFK No is, is the go. We're flying. Kathleen, take us away. Okay, well, I will as soon as my iPad cooperates, which it's not doing right now. Oh, there we go. Um, so I wasn't quite sure all of what to do, but somebody at Consonant said, do meat. I need me some silly. And I thought, well, meat's pretty silly. So at least... There I had the benefit of having my West Coast Paul there, uh, who's moved from uh, California to um, Seattle, but he came. And uh, so I got to do this as an actual duet, but today I will do it as a solo duet. For those of you who haven't heard this, this is a duet, so you, you just have to imagine that. We travel across the galaxy in search of life To contact, log, and welcome is our task But the only sentient race that we have found here You won't believe, it's hard to even ask They're made out of meat, nothing but meat They're meat when they're born, meat when they die Nothing but meat in between, they're made out of meat completely meet. This is inconceivable. What are we to do? Calm down, that can't be the explanation. What about their messages to the stars? We've intercepted radio waves aplenty. 
Surely me couldn't have sent those. The radio waves are made by machines. Who made the machines? That's who we really want to meet. Interesting choice of words there. Meat made the machines. All the machines. Yes, this meat is sentient. What are we to do? Maybe they are only part meat. A meathead with a plasma brain inside. Or they're carbon based and go through a meat stage. We've seen races such as these far and wide. You're not listening, are you? They're made out of meat all the way through. We've probed enough of them to know there's no doubt it's true. We studied them well through several lifespans, which didn't take very long. Do you have any idea how short the lifespan of meat is? This is unbelievable. What are we to do? If they're only meat, then what does the thinking? Are you telling me that they don't have a brain? You're not getting what I'm trying to tell you. So I'll repeat it for you once again. They're made out of meat. The brain's made of meat. Conscious meat, thinking meat, meat that loves and dreams. They're made out of meat, completely meat. Meat that's tried to contact us for hundreds of their years. Oh my God, you're really not kidding. So what does this meat have in mind? It wants to share ideas and information and contact other races not its kind. So what do we say to pieces of meat? Hey meat, what's cooking? Can we use our radio? Will they understand a thing? They make sounds with meat, flapping meat. And if they squirt air through their meat, they can even sing. So tell me, what do you advise here? Officially or unofficially? Well, we're supposed to contact all sentient races, but I suggest we wipe the record thoroughly. Oh yes, I agree, but how will this work? How many planets are there? Can we contain them all? Can we pretend there's nobody home? That no one came to answer their interstellar call. They must travel in special meat containers. Without these, they can't go any place at all. And meat is limited to sea space. So their chance of finding us is very small. The ones that you probed, what will they say? We went into their heads and smoothed out their meat. They'll think that they're nuts or we're just a dream. We'll mark this place unoccupied, case closed, nice and neat. Are there any others here for us to contact? Yes, a star cluster who wants to be friends. They always come around to want to join us. And why not? How unbearable it would be to be alone. All right. Continuing on silly. That one is one of mine. Um, as was, um, take it back, one of the few of mine. I haven't written that many things. My muse is very, very, very sleepy. But I'll do one I'm known of that's continuing silly. Because I've got more time than I thought I would. I thought I'd have 15 minutes, and it turns out I guess I have till 3.30, I think. So someone should tell me if otherwise. There's a shining four square city out beyond the sunlit sea with gemstone walls and streets all paved with gold. And you've heard about the savior and you know the trinity. Well, here's a 
story that the Bible never told. There are twelve gates to the city in the north, south, east, and west, and a winding road that heads out to the See the number six six seven, the neighbor of the beast. Well, the beast has been my neighbor since his folks moved out from town, and I'd recall that he'd be crying after school. He's got seven heads. He's got ten horns and on every horn a crown. And I guess the other kids were kind of cruel. Well, he started cutting classes and running with the gang. And they never missed the chance to break. four of them on horseback and the pale horse was called death that's the meanest bunch of kids i ever saw the summer after high school he took himself a wife we'd hope they'd settle down and raise a family but they were poor and always fighting and she couldn't stand the life I often wonder what became of 333 now he just raises hell and parties from the midnight to the dawn I know he's in there making whoopee to the whole death of motorhead or is that judas priest hey could you play some willie nelson for the neighbor of the beast could you play some george and tammy for the neighbor of the beast could you play some lloyd and karen for the neighbor Uh, that is by Mark Graham. There's other songs of his that people do in uh, Thilk fandom. And that last line wasn't originally Lloyd and Karen. It was, could you play some Tim and Molly for the neighbor of the beast? Hands up for if you've ever heard of Tim and Molly or know who they are. Yeah, but you're from around here. Yeah, not that, not that many hands I see. Tim and Molly are actually local to Denver and they are fabulous. Molly has... An amazing voice, and Tim uh, is an amazing instrumentalist. But um, but they aren't super, They aren't as well known as they ought to be. That is for sure. So let's see what else I'm going to do. I am going to go from silly to something else. Let's see here. Or I could just stay with silly. Yeah, let's just stay with Silly. We'll go with uh, with a song I wrote. And then it's parody that Paul Quinn perpetrated. I haven't played this for a while, so let's see how it goes. What is it you want? What is it you need? Tell me. I can find it. No matter how bizarre it seems to be. I know where to go. I know what to do. Trust me. I can help you. If what you want is odd, come to me. 
It all started out so innocently. The postman brought my mail to me. Shiny pictures in a slick little book. A credit card was all that it took. 1-800 on a telephone. I just had to tell them what I wanted to own by U.S. Post or UPS. It all got delivered right to my address. I ordered from one and got dozens more. Those catalogs kept coming to my door with the strangest stuff I'd ever seen. Now I'm Kathleen, the catalog queen. There were catalogs piled all over the place. I threw them out, but I couldn't keep pace. Phone call made and I was on easy street. I bought a filing cabinet to make it all neat. I ordered from five and got hundreds more. When we moved, the UPS man came to our door to say goodbye. It was quite a scene. And I'm Kathleen, the catalog queen. Now when I need something, I know right where to for a shot or a tune or tapes to help your bust grow A faucet sock, learn to talk to your dog Give a poor family a share of a hug I ordered from ten and got thousands more Those catalogs keep coming to my door I get Christmas cards from L.L. Bean Cause I'm Kathleen It's good to be the queen. Now you younger people might be saying to yourself, Self, this song is very dated. And yes, it is. However, I still get just as many catalogs. I don't mail my orders in. I don't call my orders in. I order them online. But I still get just as many paper catalogs as I used to because it turns out trying to look at stuff on the websites sucks. They've got terrible search functions. They've got bad pictures. You can't find what you want. It, it's just, you got to scroll. But paper catalogs, they work pretty well. You can page through them and it's easy. And there has, there is, trust me, no lack of catalogs that my post person brings us, which every time I see them, when they're dragging these things around, I think, well, at least it's job security for the postal person. So, and uh, this is what Paul Quinn did for me. And this was one of those songs that he said, oh, it'll get sung once, maybe twice, and that'll be it. You know, very short shelf life. But of course, it turns out to be one of my most requested songs which actually is a little bit terrifying for me. I'm hoping it's because this is nothing like me as opposed to people really think that I'm like this. So, you know, when you go to California where it's humid and you come back to Denver when it's not, you gotta hydrate. Who cares what you want? Who cares what you need? Silence. I'm in charge here. You'll only speak when you are spoken to. I know who you are. I know what you've done. Bad boy. I will spank you. I'll tell you what to think, feel, say, and do. It all started out so innocently. My boyfriend asked for a spank, and you see, a little paddling because he'd been bad. He said it was the best that he'd ever had. Next, I was whacking men night and day. I tanned their hides, and boy, did it pay. I soon took these off American Express, mailed out flyers with my address. I started with one and got dozen more. Those naughty boys keep coming to my door. I got the scariest bedroom you've ever seen. Cause I'm Kathleen, the discipline queen. I 
dress the part in my leather and lace. Stiletto heels, a whip and some mace, a slitted skirt that's hard to ignore, and spikes on the bra for a little bit more. I swatted five and got hundreds more. This one guy camped outside my door. I called the cops, you should have seen him beam, cause I'm Kathleen, the discipline queen. Don't spare the nightsticks, boys. He loves that. I, I gotta admit, I'm liking this gig. You strap them down, you call them a pig. Slap them silly, they pay you and leave. There's no better way, some stress to relieve. I bruised up ten and got thousands more. Those naughty boys keep coming to my door. It's too strange to qualify as obscene. Yes, I'm Kathleen, the Discipline Queen. I'm Kathleen, the Discipline Queen. You will call me the Queen. As I was looking at those words as they were scrolling by, I was thinking there is one thing about this song that you can absolutely tell this is not me. The line about the stiletto heels, if I ever attempted to wear stiletto heels, I assume it would last approximately 30 seconds before I would either break an ankle or perhaps only sprain it. But <laughs> that is not a skill set I ever learned. My God. What? Oh, I, <laughs> I can see in Margaret Middleton's thing, I can see something going like this. I thought it was a cattail as a fan. So I thought, wow, that cat is really going. All righty. Let's see here. I want to get this one in, so... Um, there we go. Um, this song um, has a hanky warning. I played it at... I've, I have gotten to the point mostly where I can sing it without crying. However, at Consonance, when I played it, um, there were people in the audience who I could hear, unlike you all. And out of the corner, side corner, I could hear somebody going, <laughs> and it just, <laughs> I just, that was enough for me to lose it. So um, at least now I won't be hearing anybody sniffling. So I might be able to get through this. I think this is a, a brilliant parody on a, or, oh, now don't be, who did that? Don't be you, don't be, don't be doing that. That's just mean. So, um, like I said, though, hanky warning, I think. This <laughs> that sounds like Peggy. I can't see who it is, but. Don't Judith, you get me in trouble, why don't you? Well, you know, we always blame everything on Peggy, don't we? Because it's always Piggy's fault. Okay. Life is unfair, so they tell me, as if that weren't part of my tale. The story that led to a movie that some people were hoping would fail. They said that's just a dream about power. Only pandering dressed up as art That could never be real Ah, but if that were true Then how could so many take heart? Could mere escapism bring them together Without something true at its core? Children are shouting Wakanda forever and that's what this really is for. Mr. Dynamite grabbed our attention. So did Robinson taking a swing. But you made something whole when you took on my role. Chadwick playing T'Challa the King. Although you, Jack, and Stan are all gone, still we can 
Feel the hope that your Black Panther gave. You showed us that kings could be kindly and dignified needn't mean grave. When we made our return in the end game, all the watchers broke out in a cheer. But now cheering has turned into mourning because you are no longer here. No one can be quite what we were from crown to regrettable shoes. But I won't fail our true believers, although I'm still rocked by the news. You fought your last battle in silence, concealing it from even me. But I know now what I cost you, so I'll stand up and face what will be. I don't know whether they'll choose to replace me now that my hero is gone. But whether I need leave or a new one portrays me, the story we've told will live on. We've made people much more than happy. We've shown just how much pride we can bring. So I say now once more what so many before me have said. Our king is dead. Long live the king. And again, that's by Melissa Garber. And uh, I thought she did a wonderful job on that. And I don't know if I ever would have heard that except for online filking, which has certainly been a lifeline to most of us in these past two years. And I think that's close enough to my uh, half hour mark that I will uh, stop playing and let Ken do, I don't know if he